Welcome to Meathead Test Kitchen, where food and fitness come to hang out. Nutrition, training, and life. It's all fair game on Meathead Test Kitchen. Welcome to Meathead Test Kitchen, a podcast where food and fitness come to hang out. We're powered by Little Movements. You can find them online at littlemovementsapparel.com and on Instagram at littlemovementsapparel. Gorgeous, comfortable, thoughtful active wear that you will fall in love with immediately the leggings have pockets the Mm. bras have pockets the joggers have pockets the jackets have pockets you know what one of my biggest gripes about women's clothing is is that they don't have enough damn pockets i know it (laughs) those i will tell you what those high-waisted pocket leggings oh they're the best i love them they're they're my favorite pair of leggings that i own and i have quite a few I also have many, many, many pairs. Love the, them. The laser cut sapphire leggings are still my favorite thing ever. You can find them right now. Littlemovementsapparel.com. Use our code MEATHEAD at checkout to save 20% on your order. And be sure to keep up with them on Instagram. They always post their latest stock updates there. And it moves quickly. Mm. So uh, if you see something you like, don't wait. Because it probably will sell out. They sell out constantly. Yeah, they do. It's great. Good for them. Yes, Love absolutely. Them. Marissa and Lindsay are awesome. They're the owners of Little Movements, and they're all about women supporting other women, and so are we. So check it out. If you are looking for new athleisure, new activewear that is functional, comfortable, and keeps everything exactly where it should be, Little Movements is definitely something that should be on your radar. LittleMovementsApparel.com. Thanks, Little Movements. We love you. We love you very much. Um, this episode could not have been timed more freaking perfectly. We need to talk about stress. So what, the, what do the kids say? I feel seen. Yes. I, I feel seen. I feel called out. I feel attacked. Yeah, all of the above. <laughs> um, somewhere it's nowhere to be found. And other times it's running and ruining your life. It's sometimes um, like something that we all deal with mm-hmm. on a fairly regular basis. We all experienced 2020 together. (sighs) And um, yeah, from years of experience, both of us, (laughs) um, (laughs) a lot of us are dealing with it poorly. Yeah. Um, Today, we're going to help you find a healthy way to deal and cope with whatever is stressing you out in your daily life. And that could be a number of things. Kids, work, spousal units, living in a (laughs) pandemic, your dog. Things are intense right now. Before we dig into some of the ways to help you manage or channel your stress, we aren't doctors or licensed therapists. If you're currently experiencing a mental health crisis, please contact your mental health care provider. We're going to talk about more than the old tried and true Sadie G method of screaming into a pillow today. (laughs) Chain smoking, cigarettes, blaring, break stuff by Limp Biscuit in your truck on the way home? I listened. Uh, That's me. (laughs) I listened to Cynical by Blink-182 on repeat on my drive in today. Just full disclosure of that's where I'm at today. (laughs) It happens to everybody. You know what? Sometimes you have those Murphy's Laws kind of days mm-hmm. and everything does go wrong and that's fine. We're going we're gonna to help you figure out how to deal with stress because stress can really mess you up. It affects more than just your brain. It affects your entire body. How so? What happens when your body reacts to a threat? Your brain sets off an alarm which fires your adrenal glands to release adrenaline and cortisol. Now, adrenaline, we all know what that is. It's going to increase your heart rate, elevate your blood pressure, and give you an energy boost. Cortisol, not a lot of people know what cortisol is. Cortisol is a hormone that increases glucose in your bloodstream. It also enhances your brain's use of glucose and increases the availability of substance that repair tissue. So basically, when your fight or flight kicks in, it's adrenaline and cortisol, mm-hmm. like priming your body so that your brain can function at a split second, that you're ready to go and that you're, you're going to do whatever you need to do. Cortisol also alters your immune system response and can suppress your digestive system, reproductive system, and growth processes if it's around too long. Right. So TLDR, cortisol is bad news bears. Yeah. You try to avoid it as much as possible. It's not um, good to be stressed out is what we're getting at. (laughs) Uh, Normally after a threat has been handled, your system chills out and goes back to normal. But when you're encountering stress for long periods of time, it can put you at risk for a host of health problems, anxiety, depression, digestive problems. I suffer from that greatly. (laughs) I'm three for three. Headaches. Yep. Had one of those yesterday. It was a stress (laughs) headache. Knew exactly what it was. Heart disease. That's a big one. Yeah. Yeah. That is a big one. Uh, there's tons of studies on it. We can link some of that in Google, from Google, if yeah. you would like. Um, but they have linked heart disease significantly with stress over, especially like the last 10 he- years, you hear about hear about it quite a bit. Yep. Um, weight gain, sleep issues, memory and concentration problems, all of those suck. Not fun. 
not at all fun. Those things are are going to wreck you immediately. It doesn't matter how good you are at whatever. Like it's going to, it's just going to rip you down immediately. So a lot of our, we were just talking about sources. A lot of our notes today either come from the Mayo Clinic or the National Alliance on Mental Illness. So Mm -hmm. I have both of those links ready to go in our show notes to put on the website. So you can check them out for yourself as well. Stress is, it it can make, if you have mental illness, it can make it worse. Um, If you have pre-existing conditions, Stress can throw a bunch of shit on an already unstable structure. And let me tell you how well I can speak on that from experience. Right. (laughs) Like I constantly fight anxiety and depression. Like I'm full disclosure. I literally sat in a Starbucks parking lot 45 minutes ago before I bought coffee thinking about if I wanted to hurt myself today because I just have hit the fucking limit in my day. That's what stress does to you. If Mm -hmm. you already have anxiety or depression, that's why managing your stress and figuring out what your triggers are and how to shoot them down is so important. Mm. If you're schizophrenic, stress can cause more hallucinations and delusions. If you have BPD, it can trigger both manic and depressed episodes. All of these things just mentioned are reasons why you should work on perfecting the art of de-stressing. And do we want to clarify what BPD is? It is bipolar. The D can either be disorder or depression. Right. Um, it, it just depends on who you ask. Um, bipolar. Right. You go through your manic episodes. Mm-hmm. You go through your depressed episodes. Most of the time in between, you're fine. Just you're even keel. Right. Um, but it can, it can really, really mess with you if you have those specific two conditions. Yeah. But just it, any mental illness in general, stress is going to exacerbate it. When are you most likely to encounter stress? Honestly, anymore, <laughs> it could be any at any moment in These time. days, <laughs> literally any given second, I feel like. And maybe I'm being dramatic. I don't know. <laughs> I, th- I think it is, though. And there's a lot going on. There so is. it's understandable. Stress can come at you literally any time in your life, but sometimes you're more susceptible than other times. You may be leaving the door open without even realizing that you're doing that. So we wanted to talk about ways to pinpoint that you are stressed out and then how to solve that and manage it a little bit better. Yes. And for me personally, this was a big component of figuring out how to debug my own garbage, I guess yeah. you could say. Yep. Um, you can't help yourself if you don't know how to help yourself. So you really either, if you, have you been to a therapist before? You might already have those tools. If you haven't, we suggest going so that you can acquire that toolkit. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, you really need to have a good support network. If you don't have a supportive network, everything in life is more difficult. I agree. Everything. It doesn't matter what it is. Having a supportive group of humans can help with a lot of problems that you encounter in life because sometimes all you need is someone to listen or someone to vent to. Right. Or just that extra outside opinion. Like it yeah. sounds corny, but it's true. Sometimes you just need someone to listen to you right. bitch for 20 minutes and then you I don't feel need better. you to fix it. Yeah. I just need an ear. Yeah. Just listen. I'm going to go off for 20 <laughs> minutes and just need you to say, okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> yes, exactly. I had one of those yesterday. Yes. I was like, I don't need you to fix this. I just need to vent for a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, if you've experienced a major life event, like moving, oh. currently trying to do that as well. Yeah. So I guess what I'm saying is I'm stressed out, guys. <laughs> Starting a new job, kind of just did that too. I'm not having children, nope. but children do sometimes add stress. Getting married, uh, a death of a loved one. Yeah. Big yeah. life changes will yes. open you up to stressors. Absolutely. Especially negative ones. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, death. Death really... Yeah. If you've never experienced the death of someone close to you, I am really happy for you that that's yeah. something that you haven't had to deal with yet. Unfortunately, it is something you will have to deal with at some point, and it really sucks because uh, it like flips your entire world upside down. Yeah, Acquiring some tools, though, to know how to deal with the different stages of that grief yes. um, are pretty important. Like, I wish that 11, 12 years ago I would have known a little better because yeah. the wound wouldn't have been open for so, quite as long as gaping as it was when I lost my grandfather, but you don't know what you don't know. So that's yeah. why we wanted to talk about this today. Yeah. I wish I could go back and talk to 18 year old me and tell that stupid bitch so many things, but <laughs> <laughs> like, Hey, you're going to make it, you're going to be okay. Mm-hmm. However, you need to get help for this shit now because it like at 18 years old, when you lose a sibling, like you don't know what to do. I had no idea. Like I went to grief counseling and was like, okay, 
I right. guess. Like, yeah, I'm sad. I know I, I'm understanding why I'm going through this. But at the same time, like, it really depends on how, again, what your support network looks like. What yeah. are the other humans that are experiencing this with you going through? Mm -hmm. In my certain situation, uh, they tried to convert me back to Christianity and tell me not to self-medicate. And I was like, okay, well, I don't want to be on pills because I don't like them. They don't mm -hmm. work for me. For me personally, they don't work. They might work for you. If that's an option that you're given, I I wholeheartedly urge you to explore it because yeah. it's worth trying. Try it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You try the next thing. But not having that toolkit as a kid fucked me so much as an adult. Like yeah. things that you don't realize that will, it's the butterfly effect, right? Mm -hmm. Like it just always will carry on and carry on and carry on. Knowing how to manage this stuff now is great, but I really wish I would have known how to handle this stuff when I was going through the thick of it, you know. Um, another reason you could be stressed out is you're not sleeping enough. We we literally did an episode a couple weeks ago about sleep and recovery mm -hmm. because it's important. But countless studies have shown that not getting enough sleep leaves your brain in bad shape. And like I said earlier, when you throw more stress onto a structure that isn't already sound or well-maintained, that can be a recipe for disaster. Yeah. Sleep is, sleep is super important. Like we've already talked about that on a different episode when it comes to working out and recovery and all that, mm -hmm. but sleep rules everything around you. <laughs> your brain needs it. Yeah. Whether or not you like it, your brain needs it and yep. you have to find the time to get it in so that your brain can run at its best. Yes. And accompanying that, maybe you're not eating the right foods when you're feeling extra shitty it's the most important time to feel like fuel your body and nourish it with good, good things. It sounds like a lot of work when you're in the weeds. Like we totally get that. Mm -hmm. I've been there before. Honestly, my stress reaction, we, I've talked about this before on this podcast is to binge eat. Oh, I just don't eat. Yeah. I go the opposite. Exactly. So I, when I feel like crap and I'm stressed out, I'm like, whatever, I'm just mm -hmm. going to eat this whole bag of cheeseburgers. <laughs> like, uh, but that, at the end of that doesn't make me feel any better. No, because your brain feels bad and now your body feels bad too. Right. Then I And I also emotionally then feel guilty. So now I'm stressed and I feel guilty. Mm -hmm. um, like sleep. You can't give something your full energy and attention if you are already running at a lower capacity and your body isn't running efficiently because it wasn't fueled efficiently. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if you're working out or not. Being able to feel your body properly is a basic life skill that I feel like everybody should be able to know how to do. And sometimes it's really hard for certain people because it does require time. It does require a little bit of work and a little bit of energy. But once you figure out what your body likes to have, it's easy. Yeah. And in situations like that, yeah, you know what? You have a really shitty fucking day and you go home and you make a really good meal and then you feel a little bit better. It's like, okay, oh, at least yeah. I have one thing under control today. Right, right. And finding like... That is self-care. Yes, absolutely. That's what I was going to say. Like, maybe you do have a crappy day. Like, honestly, all I wanted to do the other day was go home and make a nice home-cooked meal. Mm -hmm. That's all I wanted to do. I did not end up having time because by the time I was running around and I didn't even have time to decompress from the stress of the day. I legit just had time to go to bed. But right. had I been able to have that home-cooked meal, I would have been able to go to bed and wake up then not stressed as stressed out the next morning. Yeah, it helps. It helps the eliminate cycle. some of that carryover stress too. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Fucking stress. <laughs> it, and it is a part of life. It but is. I mean, it is. No matter whether or not you want to deal with it, you're going to have to at some point. We all have. So whether you're currently under fire and can't change what's happening, you have to learn how to handle these situations that you have no control over. And I'm a control freak. <laughs> so this is a really difficult thing for me to personally do is to surrender myself to a situation where I have realized there's absolutely not a damn thing that I can do about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. That sucks. Especially when it's a situation where your personal safety is in, it, like, is in danger. Yeah. Like a, a Category 5 hurricane is coming to hit you. And it's like, okay, well, I, I can't change the weather. Like, I'm not going right. to go stand out on the East Coast of PR with a fan and try to blow Maria away. Like, right. that's not going to work. It's coming whether or not I like it. So I fucking figure it out. Mm -hmm. And you do what you can with what you can. And 
sometimes that's that's good enough. It's yeah. not going to be perfect. It may not be exactly how you want it to be, but sometimes that's how it is. Something that Bama Burr said when she was on um, has stuck with me since she said it. She said, show up for yourself. Yep. Whether that's 100% in your, your, that's what you have that day, or if it's 60%, as long as you're giving that 60% or that 100%, this applies to stress too and managing it. Mm-hmm. There are things that you are not going to be, there are a lot of things you're not going to be able to control. Yeah. But being able to take self inventory and be in control of those things and yourself yep. is going to help manage a lot of this stress and make the things that you can't control less stressful. And it does. And in that certain, in that, in that situation, I feel like I talk about this a lot, but it really is something that altered me to my core of who I am as a human being. So I talk about it because it's part of my story, but this hurricane, you know, you, you prep all that you can do. We thought we did enough. So we were like, okay, I've, you know, I drained a foot and a half of water out of my swimming pool. We put all the boards up on our windows. I had two months worth of food and water for me and my cats. Like, it's like, okay, I have literally done every single thing that I can do Mm -hmm. for this situation. And that is something that you, A, have to learn to do. Just, just fight. When your fight or flight kicks in, it's doing it for a reason. Just make sure that you're using it for a constructive purpose. Yeah, exactly. And like learning how to identify some of the things that are going to set you off. Mm -hmm. Because you probably at this point as an adult understand at least what some of those are yes but then knowing how to take care of yourself both physically and mentally when those things arrive so I have had quite a bit of stress in the last couple of weeks it's a natural thing stuff beyond my control in the moment I know what I have to do mentally and physically to get through those moments Mm -hmm. and then I can unpack that shit later yes but in the moments Get it done. You can't let your, you, I can't personally allow myself to crumble in those moments because I know then what happens and the snowball effect that happens after if I allow that to happen. Mm-hmm. So I don't like the fake it or make it terminology because yeah. I, I, I don't think that's very useful, but sometimes it is. Sometimes you just have to convince Put yourself. Put a smile on your face. Okay. I recognize that I can't control this, this, and this. I'm going to get through this to the best of my ability and I'm going to give my 60% because it, maybe that's all I had that day. Yeah. And then I'm going to do something just for me after that. Yeah. A self-care thing, like a meal. Maybe yeah. you take a bath. Maybe you just go for a walk around the block and scream into the void. If that's what is is your release, you got to let it out because yeah. toxins build up in your body. And that's why we covered that at the very beginning of the episode because those toxins that are associated with stress, if you don't relieve the stress, that shit will literally build up. Kill you. It will kill you. That's what we're talking about identifying. You know. Yeah. And if you don't know, you can f- talk to somebody and figure it out. So they'll if, give you a roadmap. If you if you don't know what's triggering you, um, because everybody has triggers and everybody mm-hmm. has different triggers. I have things that trigger my anxiety. I have things that could trigger my depression. I have things that'll trigger my PTSD, and I handle all three of those things very differently. Right. They all have a different set of, like, it's like, okay, I'm feeling, what am I feeling? What is this? Is this my anxiety today? Is this my PG? Like, you have to recognize it first, and that can be hard. But the easiest way to recognize it is that feeling that you get in your stomach between your heart and your diaphragm. You know that burning, flippy sensation you get? I always, it's like, if you feel your ribs Uh just right under your your sternum, it's right there. That's you where know it that builds. feeling. Yeah. Everybody knows that feeling. That pit of your stomach feeling. Mm-hmm. If you start to feel that, figure out why. Right. Because that is the start of the cycle. Right. That's, That's literally. Where stress is. I mean, look at where your adrenal glands are. Yeah. Your adrenal glands are literally on the backside of the front of your sternum. Exactly. It's, it's bodies. Weird. How do right. they work? Science. <laughs> um, but when you start feeling those feelings and for me sometimes i get that feeling in my stomach but i also get this really hot like tingly sensation mm. in the back of my head and i'm like okay i'm pissed about something right like, i what can feel is it? it it's that i call it the front headache i know then 
Like if it's gone too far, yeah, you gave your you, you gave yourself this, you gave your 60%, but you haven't let off the stress. You mm-hmm. haven't like gotten rid of any of that. Yeah. Then I know it's time to be like, oh, right. I, I either do, I like to do yoga, even if it's 10 minutes. Just something to ground Just, yourself. I really want to do it right now, to be honest I with know, you. I know, I can do something right now too. <laughs> because your body gets tight too, because... All that shit's building up in there. Yeah, I mean, look at, like, I, this is, I'm not going to get political, but, like, look at certain politicians and look at how unhappy and unhealthy they look because they're constantly stressed, they're constantly unhappy, and they're not nice people. That shit will literally eat you from the inside Mm. out. Like, you look at somebody and you're like, that person looks terrible. Like, you just don't look like, and I don't say that as in, like, you're ugly. Right. You just don't look like you're well. Right. Right. And you can, you, you can, can totally yeah, tell for sure. It's just, you gotta, I think that we do episodes like this as not, I wouldn't say even frequently, but the, like often enough because they're super important to recognize that. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of things out mm-hmm. there <laughs> that are going to contribute to that. And that's. And you know. people are still scared to talk about mental health for mm. some reason in this country. Like, here's the secret. We're all fucked up. We all are. We're all just different levels of messed up. Right. Like, Well, and I think, too, like, I honestly, until probably 10 years ago, didn't know what to do with the stress mm-hmm. or any other thing that I felt. My go-to lock it in. was to not talk about it, and then it gets to the point where you literally explode. That's me. Like a tea kettle. Mm-hmm. And, and my go-to emotion... Whether it was stress or guilt or sadness was to get angry. And I didn't realize that that's what I was doing because that's all I knew how to do. It's a defense mechanism. That is the weirdest self-realization thing Mm. I think I ever had that when I I had to explain it to Phil one time because Phil and I, I mean, we've been together for what year is it? We've been together for 12 years now. Um, The first time we had a major argument, I like classic me just nuclear explosion Mm -hmm. um and I hide everything really really well until I get to that point I can feel it building I feel my emotions super super vividly but I don't let that show Mm -hmm. so you don't see me show any actual emotion until I'm ready to go Mm -hmm. like it was a really weird conversation to explain to Phil that me being super angry is how sometimes my depression manifests Mm -hmm. Or my anxiety manifests as that sometimes. Like these are weird like things that you don't realize about yourself. And and the only reason I realized it was by going and talking to somebody. Yep. Going and talking to somebody doesn't mean that it's necessarily a mental health issue. Maybe you just want to understand the reasoning behind some of the things that you do. Why do I handle my stress this way? Yeah. There's a reason. It's a learned behavior typically. Yes. And you don't know that you learned it. Yeah. Real, I mean, really, there's a lot of things that we pick up as humans subconsciously that yeah. as I mean, mostly as like kids and young adults, I feel yeah. like that that molds us into who we are. But as like I've spent you, you know this, but our listeners may not if they don't follow me on Instagram or whatever. But I've been going through like my own second coming of my mental health journey because I've been so fucking unhappy lately that it's like, all right, I got to talk to somebody to figure out that figure out what's going on. Yeah. yeah. And that started with I got my personality typed again and every other therapist or doctor I had been to up to this point had typed me incorrectly. So A, that's part of the reason my therapy never worked. They Mm. weren't dealing with the right personality. Turns out I'm a super rare personality type. There's less than 1% of women in the world that have my personality type, which explains why I'm more like a dude, (laughs) which is true. Like Mm. my brain runs more like a male brain does. And that's why I come off so blunt sometimes or just so dry or morbid or weird or what, you know, I'm not a typical girl. I've always known I'm not a typical girl, Mm. but now psychology has shown me why I'm not a typical girl. And that is from a fuck ton of trauma as a kid. And that's, I was going to, I did want to touch on that before we wrap this episode up, because I think that it's super important. Like, yes, this episode is about stress, but stress is a super deep thing. Yeah. Stress can manifest in a million different ways from a million different things. Yeah. But I also learned that like a lot of how I dealt with stuff, it was, you know, my response to stress was to get mad Mm -hmm. and freak out. You know, my freak outs are yelling, screaming, 
making noise, but if I means I'm slamming a door, that's what I'm doing. You know, mm-hmm. I'm making a, I'm making a show, but I learned that behavior. Yep. I learned to cope with my stress that way because when I was a kid, that is how I got the attention that I needed. Mm-hmm. So we, I guess the point that I was going to make earlier was I think that it's super important. Like, yes, you learn, please learn how to manage your stress because Absolutely, it is, yes. it is very terrible for you, but I think it's also worth investing in yourself to go talk to somebody just to learn yourself a little better. If yeah. you are questioning like, gosh, why do I do this every single time this happens? There is a reason for it. And and if it gets bad enough, like for me, I was I was borderline existential crisis for weeks in the beginning mm. of January, end of December. December's a really bad time of the year for me anyway because that's when my brother died. Um so it really just that Seasonal depression on top of my right. my sad season with my everything that happened with my brother, with the holidays being just irreparably screwed this year, with the pandemic. Like, we're all under immense amounts of stress. Mm-hmm. So if you find yourself popping off to people that you normally wouldn't pop off to in ways that you usually don't speak to others, that is your first sign that something isn't right and you should go talk to somebody. Yeah. And you can do that online now. If you I don't do, feel yeah. comfortable going in person, there are, are a ton of things at your disposal online. Yeah. It's not an endorsement, but um, yeah. I've been using Talkspace because like I said earlier- And they're licensed they are. therapists, by the way. They are licensed. That's what Michael Phelps uses. Mm-hmm. He he endorses Talkspace. And I I mean, if it works for Michael Phelps, I'll try it. And right. it has been working. Um, it's just therapy doesn't mean that you're weak. We need Mm -mm. to, we need to kill that narrative. Like, I don't know what it is about America and being so fucking afraid of talking about our mental health when we're not okay, but we need to normalize therapy. And I feel like our generation has done a better job of normalizing therapy because I feel like myself and you and all of our other friends that like are in high profile, you know, high stress jobs Mm -hmm. as well. We're all very open about, Hey, we're flawed. We are right. all flawed and, and it's every good single to get human help. being on this earth has flaws. Nobody's yeah. perfect. No. And it, it it's it's another it's just self-care, man. Yeah. Really. At the end of the day, dealing with your stress is self-care. It and is. if dealing with your stress is figuring out why you react to stress the way that you do, do that. It's for you. Yeah. And if you feel comfortable talking about it and maybe that helps somebody. If you don't feel comfortable talking about it, totally fine too. Yeah. Just realize that Self-care comes in many different varieties. Yes. And when it comes to talking about your experiences, that can help people a lot. And that mm-hmm. is something that I have, we, you and I have both figured this out, you know, having this podcast and being able to be unfiltered and talk about whatever the hell we want to, whenever we want to, Yeah, um, that we can help tell stories that help change people yeah. and that help them recognize, oh, I might be in this pattern of behavior. Maybe it's time for me to see help. Right. I don't share these things because I want you to feel bad for me. That's the last thing I want is somebody's pity. Trust me. I throw my own pity party every damn day. I don't need your pity. I'm here to try to help you realize that you're actually normal because you are. You're flawed. You're fucked up. We're all that way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We all Honestly. And I I think, Join the party. (laughs) We talk, we have these episodes and we have this podcast because- that was like the goal was to be open and help other people. Yeah. Yeah. We swear. Okay. But we're also like pretty brutally honest. Like I'm not going to hold back anything from our listeners. And we like, thank you for listening to this podcast and giving us the platform to be able to talk about health, fitness, nutrition, all of these things health that we think includes are mental important. health. Yes. Mental health is he- mental health care is health care. And it's something that, we need to stop ignoring yeah. like we, just, we've, we've talked about being there for yourself. Like the re like part of being there for yourself. Isn't just a fitness journey. Yeah. Being there for yourself also includes the mental fitness journey. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you can, if you can get your mental game straight, that changes everything. Everything. Oh, yeah. It's one of those snowflakes. It is. It is. And it's not always going to be on point all the time. I mean, oh, yeah. sh- I'm not on point all the time and that's fine. Like you don't have to be, you just have to be functional enough to get by right now. Absolutely. And if you don't feel comfortable or you are looking for resources, please, please reach out to us yeah. at hello at meatheadtestkitchen.com. Um, uh, we both have our own like vetted resources yes. by, by actively seeking out that help when we needed it or need it. Um, so if you're not comfortable maybe doing some of the research and you maybe you don't know where to start and you want to like, I want to manage my stress, but I also want to know why I'm, why I react this way. Yeah. 
please reach out. We're yeah, here do. for you. Send us an email um, anytime. I mean, it's on my phone, so they come directly to me all the time when you email me. We would yeah. love to hear what you're up to. Well, and you can always um, also get a hold of us at any point on Instagram. Any of our social, um, yeah. Meathead Test Kitchen on Instagram, Facebook, MTK staff on Twitter. You could find um, Sadie and myself on Instagram, Meathead Sadie, Meathead Sasha. If you feel more comfortable sending a DM and you don't want to email, totally fine too. Speaking of, I got one yesterday and it made me cry and I might cry. Uh, while I'm reading it, but it really, I needed it yesterday. Mm -hmm. Um, it was one of those things where it's like, okay, you know, like you and I have been having this conversation a lot. It's like, are we doing the right thing? Like, this is what we want to do. Are we doing the right thing? Well, yesterday was confirmation that we're doing the right thing. Um, but a listener had messaged me about something unrelated and then started talking about how, um, they had been emotionally abused by someone in college and how, she didn't understand it until after the fact. Um, and I was like, I'm sorry that you were emotionally abused. I've just recently been realizing in therapy that this was happening to me since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Like, my familial situation has never been good. Like, but. like triggering shit coming. But mm-hmm. my first memory is of my dad trying to break into my bedroom to kill my mom when I was a kid. Like, that's, that's shit that will alter you irreparably forever. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I can't control. I had no control right. over it. And that we talk about relinquishing control to things sometimes. It's like, you know what? This is something I had nothing to do with. I have no control over how I am now. I can handle it going forward. But that is something in the past that you have to deal yep. with. And, you know, I tried self-medicating. I tried drugs. I tried alcohol. Don't do that, by the way. It makes it worse. It does. It exacerbates <laughs> it well, so more than worse. tenfold. Yeah, it, it, it's the last thing you should and do. And that can also, like, I know every single person is different, but self-medicating with drugs and alcohol, in my personal experience, always makes it worse. Yeah. And it, for me, ends up damaging relationships because then I spiral. Mm-hmm. If I'm self-medicating, it's, then it's, I'm drinking at, yeah, I'm drinking at things Uh huh. and I don't, I can't do that. I can't anymore. That's what I did uh, until I was probably 30 years old. I spent a good chunk of my like, late, my like, late teens into my early twenties. I drank at everything in the world. Yeah. And it doesn't, it doesn't solve your problems. It ends up exacerbating. I do realize that some people may be okay with that, but I think it's a slippery slope. It can be. It can be a very slippery slope, and it is one that I I fucked with for a long time, and you did as well. Mm-hmm. And I would consider us both very, very, very lucky that we didn't find ourselves in a situation where we wound up dead after doing all that yep. stuff. Like, I, and that, like, honestly, like, if we're pulling the curtain back, like, that is how I manage my stress. I didn't. I drank at it. Yeah. At a bar every night. And then that, it just, it, for me personally, caused a whole host of other problems. Yeah, because it fucks all and your interpersonal it, relationships, too. It does, and then I, the money thing comes into uh-huh. it. You're spending that much money in a bar, then I'm stressed out about money. Yeah. But I wasn't of mind or knowledge of myself to know and realize that these things were all linked together. Yeah. And this is why therapy is so important. Yes. This is why therapy is so important. Um, so back to that message. Um, they responded back to me and uh, they were like, I'm really sorry you went through that as well. This is something that I still deal with and I try to understand. Um, I've been married for a couple of years and I still get anxious because of the experience I had previously or that I'll say something that'll make my husband want to leave. And I was mm-hmm. like, I feel that. Uh, but they, uh, they were like, I appreciate you sharing your experiences. You're one of my favorite accounts to follow here. So thank you. That's awesome. Like we, obviously we wouldn't have a podcast. I'm not going to lie. It wasn't for the listeners. Yeah. I'm I lying is something I fucking hate. Mm. I'm never going to lie to you. If you're listening to our show, I'm never going to blow smoke up your ass. I'm never going to tell you something that I think you should hear that I don't believe. Yeah. That's not me. That's I, I don't believe in that shit. Because that's not how you what help people. Point? Yeah. That, and that's, I know I've said it like four times now and I'm, I'm not trying to beat a dead horse, but like, that's why we wanted to start the podcast, like was yeah. to help people. And if that means that maybe we tangent off on personal experiences, the reason we're sharing those personal experiences is, is because we want you to know that we understand if you are going through that yourself. Yeah. I don't share things to make you be like, Oh, I can't believe she said that. Or, Oh my God, what's wrong with her? I share things because I feel like it's relatable in the conversation that we're currently and, uh, having. It's my and way it, of connecting. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, like totally. I don't, I don't bear my soul to many people. So the fact that I've said the things that I've said today is kind of a big deal. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but everybody, everybody deals with things differently. You just need to make sure that the way that you're dealing with things aren't destructive. Yes. Yeah. That's a beautiful way to put it. Like, please manage your stress. Identify those triggers. If you have, if you think it's a bigger thing than that, reach out to somebody, figure out constructive ways to handle that stress. Yeah. Like plastic bottle vodka and ditchweed marijuana are not uh, the ways to do it. Oh. <laughs> and I'm so old now that just gave me a hangover. Yeah. Headache. Right. I know. I drank so much plastic <laughs> bottle vodka in high school. It Ugh. was disgusting. Like, see, that's the thing too. Like behaviors that you don't realize why you're doing things like, Oh my God, I was a fucking teenage alcoholic because my life was terrible. Why didn't mm. I have therapy then? Oh, because I couldn't. Right. It's like, Oh, yeah. If you're if you're a parent and you have a teenager that says, "Hey, things aren't right right now. Can I go talk to somebody?" Please tell them yes. As somebody that was in that situation that needed help, that made extreme cries for help both physically and verbally to my family as a teenager who was spiraling by self-medicating because their life was out of control at age 17 and I didn't know what to do, take them to therapy. Say yes. Not only can you go, but let's find you a doctor and I'll take you. Yeah. Don't go with them to therapy. Let them go by themselves because there I believe therapy is one of those things that unless you're going to couples therapy, you need to let that person go by themselves and do their thing. Yep. Therapy needs to be completely unedited and that means that you got to let that you're also They might they might talk about you and that's fine. You're part of this person's life and you might be a stressor even though you don't want to be, you might be. Yeah. Well, and, and one thing too, that's super important is creating a trust yeah. with that therapist. It's not always that's so hard. Sometimes that's, I was just going to say like, and if you've tried therapy before and it didn't necessarily work a hundred percent for you, maybe that wasn't the person, Yeah, but it's like anything else. Like you don't give up going to work, you know, or yeah. find, seeking out like if what you want to be when you grow If it's worth doing, yeah. it's worth trying. And I personally, I've been through probably six or seven therapists. Yeah. And doctors. And honestly, at this point, the only ones that I feel like get me are a personal friend who is a therapist, who isn't my therapist, but then like somebody on Talkspace that I'll connect with. And I will immediately be like, okay, this is my type and this is what's happening. And as soon as I tell them that, they're like, Okay, so let's figure out how to mm. unpack this and let's let's deal with this. Yeah, absolutely. Therapy moral is good this, for you. Yes, I was say, moral <laughs> of the story, therapy is good, stress is bad, okay? I needed um, this, though. This was therapy for me today because I, I was having a shitty day. So was I. Like, maybe we didn't stay 100% on point, and I think I may have to change the title of this one, That's but right. I think it was needed just to have an open conversation. And I knew that, I mean, mental health is tied with stress. Yeah, I mean so. <laughs> it's it's all relative. Your brain and it's is all a important. muscle; it also needs to be trained. So train, treat your brain. I mean, if you broke your arm, you'd go to the doctor. Exactly. If your brain exactly. feels crappy, you need to go get it. You need to go get go to the out. doctor. Yeah, it's go fine. To the doctor, you're just taking care of yourself. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with making sure you are in your best version of yourself and happy. Absolutely. You owe nobody any apology for that. To yeah. live your best fucking life is up to you because no one else is going to do it for you. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, the only person that you may have, I mean, we, we had this conversation yesterday. I'm going to steal a quote from my husband, but it's like, think about it. When you're born, it's you. When you die, it's you. Everything in between, the only person that you always know you can count on is yourself. Mm -hmm. Who's always there? Yeah. Like you, you can, be able to it, it, that also kind of ties in with like, you can move, but you're bringing yourself with you. Yeah. So if you, you can try to escape it by drinking, but yourself is still going to be there the whole you time. You are still there. You are the common denominator. So you got to yeah. be, you got to be okay with living with yourself. Absolutely. That's yeah. deep. And that's da -da -da. a mic drop. I feel like we are very, very much proud to be a Heard at Media podcast. Please subscribe, rate us, review. Anywhere you stream podcasts. We appreciate it. We love you guys. Um, Thank you again for listening to the podcast and giving us a platform to speak freely about things that are important to us. And I hope that having those freely have like free flowing conversations helps at least one person. 
I, I hope that when we do these kinds of, I know we're a fitness and nutrition podcast, but sometimes, you know what? You just need to talk about shit that's bugging you. To me, fit, this is part your of Your brain is yeah, it a is. muscle. Like, it is. It's part of that. Like, But mental. a lot of people don't necessarily see it that way. I totally get it. Yeah. That's why I think that being able to have these conversations are super important. So yeah, we appreciate you guys listening. If Thank you guys you. need anything, you. hello at meatheadtestkitchen.com. Go to meatheadtestkitchen.com. We'll have the links to the sources that we stated earlier in the show notes. Um, uh, if you have questions, we can hopefully help you. I mean, if we can't help you, we'll find somebody that can, because like I said, we're not here to fucking lie to you. That's the last thing we want. We, we care about you because you take the time to listen to us and we consider you a friend. So we're always here for you, no matter what you need. Find us on social media, find us via email, whatever, TikTok. It doesn't matter. Hit those DMs if you need something. Show notes, recipes, fitness resources, the MTK store. You can find it all at meatheadtestkitchen.com. You may not have mastered the art of stress relief just yet, but at least you have some idea of what you could be dealing with and how to deal with it. Again, if you're really under fire right now, and you feel like shit's too much, please contact a mental health professional. We need you here, and we need you to be running at your best. We love you. Hope you have an awesome fucking day, and we will talk to you next week. MTK, out. Join Sadie and Sasha every Monday, helping to make your fitness and nutrition journey suck less. MTK. A Huda Media Production.